While much of the world is bickering about artificial intelligence and sustainability, here at the Emirates Palace Hotel in Abu Dhabi, that's one thing that's not happening. ICAO, along with the GCAA, the UAE's regulator, have brought together nations from around the world to talk about the future of aviation at its Global Implementation Support Symposium. Set against the backdrop of the Emirates' vibrant culture and rich aviation heritage, GCAA drove the focus to sustainability and innovation while ensuring ICAO's commitment to continued safety and security of aviation operations around the world be achieved with no country left behind. For the first time, GIS is being held alongside the Global Sustainable Aviation Marketplace, GSAM, a landmark GCAA initiative aimed at accelerating the global shift towards alternative and low carbon fuels in international aviation, as well as co-locating with the SAF MENA event. There were more than 2,000 delegates, representatives from 108 states and 32 government ministers in attendance. The opening ceremony featured a spectacular display of bands, horses and aerial performances culminating in an awe-inspiring moment as skydivers and wingsuit pilots descended, carrying the flags of the UAE, ICAO and GSAM. Later, the event saw a new Guinness World Record set for the greatest number of fireworks fired through a ring of drones in 30 seconds. Meanwhile, back in the conference room, ICAO President Salvatore Shakitano talked about the value of the event. We have a global standards, we have global procedures, we have a global guidelines, but we now have uniform implementation. That's why we are seeking uh, energy, cooperation among states, uh, between states and the care to support those states that need support. The mood at the show was upbeat when it came to sustainability. GSAM provided a forum to establish new pathways to decarbonise aviation, reinforced by the co-located event SAFMENA. So the SAFMENA Congress is uh, an event that's focusing on the pathways to aviation decarbonisation that exists in the Middle East and wider North African region. And uh, essentially this year there's a lot of discussion around some of those pathways which include how we can scale up SAF, uh, the uh, inclusion of LCAF potentially as well, as well as some new aerospace technologies that help to sort of reduce emissions in the aviation sector. The UAE has been leading the way with its drive to decarbonise and introduce new pathways. So I've been telling everyone, if we want to change the game, it's not about introducing a new energy producer. It's about talking about with the big oil sectors to transition with us, to move from the current old fashion of jet fuel and start producing LCAP, which is the second version, then moving with the same refineries to the SAP. We want to move with, the, with LCAP and SAP at the same time. Industry involvement plays an essential part and Boeing's Vice President of Environmental Sustainability explains. Um, SAF is unique in that each region of the world has a different strength in which uh, SAF can be made from, from different feedstocks. Here in the Middle East, the abundance resource is obviously a lot of sunlight. Uh, so through solar and through uh, other renewable electricity generation, there's a pathway called power to liquid uh, SAF. And that's where um, you can actually take that renewable electricity, uh, CO2 and water and create liquid fuels, liquid, hy liquid hy hydrocarbons out of that. Of course, there was lots to talk about with advanced mobility and especially electric aircraft. Uh, the aircraft, uh, again, brings on board uh, a lot of uh, impact within the space. One, it's, uh, again, it leverages the ecosystem of the green sustainability aviation impact uh, with the use of EV batteries. Uh, again, it allows basically low apex uh, model operations. Uh, and again, with the sustainability initiative, uh, decarbonization impact uh, and with the use of the EV. It helps us basically to build on the EV space as well as now working on building on the green hydrogen space as well. And to prove EVTOLs have a place in the aviation ecosystem, manufacturer Lyft Aircraft 
brought its Hexa EV toll to Abu Dhabi and was granted permission to demonstrate how the tourism-targeted ultralight experience could work along the Gulf beaches in the future. We're here today in the UAE trying to show that this is a real aircraft that people are flying in the real world. It's not a prototype, it's not a CAD drawing. Uh, this is happening in the US and so we'd love to bring that here. The GCAA is strongly behind this E revolution. There has to be a balanced approach between the growth of the business and us maintaining the sustainability. It is very challenging. Maybe the business will never stop. It is moving in a fast pace forward. However, there, is, there, is, there are calls even to maintain the sustainability within the growth of the business. This is one of the challenges. But our Zizi says there's a balance to find. We are expected to be seen as the first country that will operate a commercial uh, EV tool in Dubai and even in, in Abu Dhabi. Somewhere this year there might be uh, an experimental phase of some of our key EV tool projects. Uh, um, an official commercial operation is expected somewhere maybe by end of 26 or early 2027. ICAO's No Country Left Behind initiative was plain to see, with some 36 agreements signed and deals done for training and consulting to ensure global consistency. You know that there are minimum standards and that wherever you go, you know that those minimum standards must be respected. So in this sense, in this sense the outcome of this event is the strong commitment of the member states to get a uniform implementation of the standards, whatever is the country that has a needs, because this is an interest of all member states. Nowhere was this more apparent than with Africa. Our key objective here is to see how we can transform um, Africa better in terms of air transport and how we can actually connect the continent better because <laughs> it's bigger than it looks. Um, and so um, it's really important for us to be able to do that. And partnerships like this with the, with the UAE that has a clear example of how um, aviation has driven economic development um, in the region, not just in the country, uh, you know, would really like to see how we can strengthen that kind of partnership. And of course, continue to work with all of our different stakeholders. A good example of this was Rwanda, where the country's RCAA Training and Innovation Centre was awarded ICAO Train Air Plus accreditation. The accreditation is very important because then you get to be recognized by other training organizations. As long as ICAO has certified you, uh, that accreditation allows you to train and issue certificates to all your students to a level that is accepted globally. And Africa will be even more in the spotlight next year. As ICAO announced at the event, it's going to move to Morocco for GIS 2026. Well, that brings us to the end of three incredible days of conference, looking at sustainability, at innovation, and of course, making sure no country gets left behind. Well, it's all been about the future. And actually, if you take a look behind me now, that is the future. Thank you for watching. We'll see you then.